Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unity RPG tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to be adding a little bit more to our enemy. So what we're going to be doing is making it so our enemy can detect when other enemies are within the a certain range. So for this case we're just going to make it so the enemy can detect a player within a certain range and after they detect the player they're going to no longer search for the player but they're going to follow them at a certain distance. So we're just going to be adding a couple of things to our enemy stat script that we worked on before. And so we can just jump in there and start adding stuff. So the first thing we're going to need to set up is a target so that when the enemy is casting um, the radius spear cast that it can actually detect and pick up a target to follow. So while this is null, we don't want to, or we just want to wander around. So I did set this up a little bit different. Um, so we're still checking is dead if it's not dead and target equals equals null. So that's pretty much saying that there's no target selected, the player's not in range or anything like that. So when there's no target, um, we're gonna have our enemy still randomly wander around, but we want to call this, which is going to be search for target. So down here, we're going to be searching for a target. Now, if I should say if you're just making a single player RPG, you can just set the target to the player and then you can just check the distance between the player and the enemy. For this system, we're detecting any object. So if it was a multiplayer game and you want your enemy to detect multiple players, um, this is something you'd want to use. Or if you want them to detect different tags of different objects, maybe. Um, so what this is doing is it's uh, creating a sphere cast. So what it's going to do is create a invisible Spear, it's almost like a trigger, and if it detects anything within that area, it'll do um, whatever we tell it to do. So what it's going to do is create an array of whatever it hits, and it'll go through here and do something for each thing that it hit. So what you could do also in here is a send message to each one of those objects. So if you're doing an AoE attack, where you're attacking multiple players, it can send a damage to any player that was in range of that attack. So this can be used for multiple different things. But we're, what we're gonna be doing for this is telling it if it hit our player or if our player is within range, then we wanna set the player to the target. And once we hit this, um, so it'll no longer call is null if we have a target assigned. So if we, if we assign our player to the target, it'll start call, calling a uh, follow target instead. So down here in our follow target, we're gonna be t detecting the range between the enemy and the player, and we're gonna make it so our um, enemy is constantly looking at our player as well. So we wanna make it so they're facing towards and they're moving forward towards our player. So for our distance, if you wanted to actually add some leeway, so in a lot of RPG games, when enemies are attacking, they're not um, directly on top of the player. So if you want to have a little bit of distance between that, then you can set this number to lower or higher depending on um, how big the enemy is and how far away you want them to be. Because uh, once we calculate this, maybe if they're within a certain range of the player, they can attack the player or send some kind of attack towards the player. And so that's how we're going to be calculating that. So this is our basic way to follow the target. And now we don't have a way to set up um, to make it so our enemy stops following us. Uh, so the only way we would do that is if the um, either the player got too far away from the enemy, the enemy got too far away from their original spawn point, or the enemy died. So in all those cases, well, if the enemy dies, you want to make it so they don't move at all. But if any of those other two cases, you want to make them move back to whatever spawn point that they originally spawned at and continue doing their randomized uh, walking location or set path. So yeah, that's pretty much all we need for that. So we'll save that, we'll jump back into Unity and we'll go test this out real quick. So now that we spawn back in, we wanna go find our enemy. And we'll see once we got into a certain range, our enemy rotated towards us and started moving towards us. 
And as you can see, this is the, the range at which they stop moving. So if you had a really big enemy, maybe you want them to be out this far away and able to attack the player. But if you want that to be lower, you would change um, that distance to be lower. Uh, let's see here, it was follow target. So if you want to set that lower, you can set it to like 10 or 15 or something like that for the distance. And that'll correct that if you want them to be closer to the player, say like in this range. And so as I was saying, if we got too far away between the player and the enemy, we can make it so the enemy just automatically runs back to where um, their spawn point is. Or if the enemy, let's say we tried bringing them, that we stay close to them, but we bring them way out here somewhere, you would want to make it so the enemy runs back and avoids any of the attack. So that's a couple of things we could add in the future. Um, you can pretty much create that with the stuff that I've included already. You're just going to be calculating the distance and changing up different things so you could create another function for return to you know spawn location or something along those lines. So yeah, that's a basic way to set up a way for your enemy to follow the player. And you can do this with a bunch of different enemies or whatever you guys want. But uh, yeah, until next time, I will see you in the next tutorial.